This short presentation is an introduction to meliconium dieback, brought to you by the Ohio Plant Diagnostic Network. Meliconium dieback can attack stress trees. Stresses can include insect attacks and environmental stress, such as drought or transplant shock. This pathogen will cause cankers and dieback on young twigs and branches of the stressed tree. Susceptible species include alders, jugulin species such as walnut and butternut, and Betula species, such as birch and hornbeams. This is Meliconium dieback on European hornbeam. Note that one branch is alive and producing leaves. The other branches have been infected and have died due to Meliconium. Upon closer examination, you can see the infected branches with black spots compared to the uninfected main branch with smooth bark and some small leaves emerging. Meliconium produces these black spots, spots that are fungal fruiting bodies called stromata. When moistened, the stromata will disperse their fungal spores, known as conidia. Notice the location of the stromata along this branch. There is a transition area from dead, diseased tissue to living tissue. Here is another example of a transition area or zone. This area or zone is important when making therapeutic pruning cuts to the branch to remove the disease. There can be many disease transition zones on one plant, like here, here, and here. Let's prune away the diseased plant tissue. Did we get all of the dead diseased tissue? No, we did not. You cannot always assume that where the disease symptoms stop, the dead infection area stops. In order to remove all of the diseased tissue, you must sometimes remove several inches of the seemingly healthy plant tissue to ensure, that, to ensure the health and well-being of the tree. Proper therapeutic pruning should be cut further back on the symptomatic branch. This lower cut is more appropriate than the higher cut.